A permutation matrix is an n by n identity matrix whose rows have been rearranged. In other words, it's a permutation of the rows of i. For example, let's find the permutation matrix produced by switching the second and third rows of i3. So we'll start with i3, and in a very complicated process, we'll switch the second and third rows. Okay, maybe that's not that exciting. So why is the permutation matrix called a permutation matrix? The obvious answer is that it's a permutation of the rows of the identity matrix. But if the only thing you learn in linear algebra is that every matrix corresponds to a linear transformation, you'll probably fail the class. But at least you will have learned the most important idea. So again, every matrix is a linear transformation, and in the case of a permutation matrix, it corresponds to the permutation of the components of a vector. For example, let's take that permutation matrix that we just found, and let's apply it to the vector a, b, c. What that means is we'll rewrite the vector as a column vector, and left multiply by the matrix. And if we do that, we get Note that we produce the permutation matrix by switching the second and third rows of the identity matrix, and when we applied the permutation matrix to a vector, it switched the second and third components of the vector. And in general, the permutation of the rows of the identity matrix correspond to the permutations of the vector components. So suppose we have a permutation. To find the corresponding permutation matrix, permute the rows of the identity matrix in the same way. This is actually a little trickier than it sounds. So, let's find a permutation matrix corresponding to the permutation the vector a, b, c, d, e becomes the vector d, b, a, e, c. It's important to keep in mind the permutation is the rearrangement. So while this first vector component A becomes D, that's not the permutation. The permutation is that A shifts from the first position to the third position. So the permutation we want would move the first row of the identity matrix to the third row. And remember, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. Let's record our permutations. R1 is moved to R3. Next, the second element B stays the second element. While we don't need to write this down as a row switch, we should, just so we know we've taken care of it. Because remember also, if it didn't happen, it should still be written down. So R2 goes to R2. The third element, C, moves to the fifth position, so that's R3 to R5. The fourth element, D, moves to first place, R4 to R1. And the fifth element, E, moves to the fourth place, R5 to R4. So if we apply these permutations to the identity matrix, we get And remember, if you don't catch your mistakes, someone else will. Let's also verify that this produces the correct permutation by applying it to our column vector. So if we apply our matrix to our vector, we get, which is what we wanted to get. Given a matrix, the first question you should ask, does it have an inverse? Since permutation matrices are permutations of the identity matrix, they have inverses. 
So how do we find them? So remember, every row of a permutation matrix consists of zeros and a single one. So if u and v are vectors corresponding to different rows, the dot product will be zero. And meanwhile, the dot product of any row with itself will be one. So if we could multiply the rows of the permutation matrix by other rows of the permutation matrix, we might get the identity. And so remember, the transpose of a matrix turns row vectors into column vectors. This suggests that if P is a permutation matrix, its inverse is its transpose. Well, let's try to prove it. So we'll let our permutation matrix be where the PIs are rows of zeros with a single one. So the transpose will be, and if we multiply P by P transpose, we get where we'll need to figure out the product of PI times PJ transpose. Since the PIs consist of all zeros with a 1 in 1 position, then PI times PJ transpose is either going to be 1 or 0, depending on whether I is equal to J or not. So the entry in the first row, first column, will be, and the remaining entries will be 0. In the second row, all entries will be 0 except for P2 times P2 transpose, which will be the second row, second column entry. And in general, all entries in the ith row will be 0 except for the entry in the ith column, which will be 1. And so the product gives us the identity. Now, if we take that product in the reverse order, we also get the identity. And to prove that it's the identity, we'll make it a homework problem. And this gives us, if P is a permutation matrix, its inverse is its transpose.